Frazzles, everybody. Yay! Yay! Hey! We're going to buy the campaign that features women and my goal. And. It must be a fool. Yes. We have another player today. Everyone. Yeah. Dude, let's start with us today. She plays Luna. And let's just do some quick intros. So, let's start with my goal. Hey everybody, I'm Michael. I'm at RoboSardi on Twitter, and I play Ellie, um, who's a Eladrin druid, who's also having a good time in Vergus, slash kind of traumatized on the inside and just not showing it. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Not yet ready to process that. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And we'll go to Serena. Hello everyone, my name is Serena. Uh, I'm at, you can find me at Pixiepocalypse on Twitter. And uh, I play Kiara, our Drow Eldritch Knight. Kristen. Yeah. Hello, I'm Kristen. I play Kayampi. She is a sun soul monk slash death cleric. And she's also she's a little also traumatized, traumatized inside. Yay! Yay! All trauma. Yay! Trauma. Trauma. All trauma all the time, except for with the paradigm shift. We haven't quite hit trauma yet. We're just, we're just working through it. We should be trauma damsels. Trauma damsels. Trauma damsels. This is like a hospital where we have to be on like television, soap opera at the general yeah. hospital. It, yeah, it does fit yeah. the theme of sort of things. Um, and Luna was a uh, druid and then went through a very long class change after she became a werewolf and now is basically long arc. We finally got to the end. She's a full fledged paladin and we did a homebrew. Um, adjust, we basically adjusted the um, nature paladin and uh, <laughs> it's more centralized on the. Uh, Ancestor worship that is canon in this world for humans. I am the DM. I'm Tiffany. We I made the world of I here. Actually, that's just a, the world is. Uh, I don't remember. Etrian Atis. There we go. There's two two uh, celestial twins. He's a the scientist. Call them. Oh, celestial and twins. You can find us. Uh, me, mainly, I run the Dungeon Damsels Twitter at Dungeon underscore Dan. Now we're gonna go to a spotlight, if Michael has one. I do have one. Cool. Let's talk about it. We love sharing the uh, indie game developers, anyone, you know, small businesses, we're all supporting them and their great works. Yeah, because I just, I, honestly, I love the community for uh, TTRPGs on Twitter. Everyone's super nice and also just have some really cool stuff that they're working on. And so, can you guys see my thing? What I'm spotlighting today is DC Bradshaw at Curious Penguin on Twitter. They are um, an indie, indie writer and they do a lot of educational resources as well. But what really um, stuck out to me was they made um, a resource called Little But Fierce, which is like a simplified um, uh, 5e for for kids. Aww, for the yeah. kiddos. Yeah, I think it's super cool. Like they just have a simplified uh, sheet. Uh, they just kind of like combine stuff. I, I think they just made like the, the numbers and the stats a whole lot simpler. Uh, and honestly, I just, I'll run this for people who are new to D and D too. Just for I mean, I want to run it. Let's just do a. Let's, let's do just a, let's just do this. Yeah. Let's do a multi shot with our kids. Five you know, stands for five. Everyone. No, that's not it. That's <laughs> <five>. <laughs> I I mean if. You could make it the truth. <laughs> I mean that would be an awesome tagline just for like this. It's just like little bit fierce. Five everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Very excited five me. <laughs> yeah, I think they're they're still working on this. But just be on the lookout. Uh, Do they have a Kickstarter or something for it? Or are they gonna release it? I, I think they're still fine tuning it because I remember they were posting this during um, Quip Wednesday. Uh -huh. um, but I'm very excited to dive into more of this. I saw this and I was like, this is pretty cool. 
Yeah. And um, they they also have a site with all of their resources, which is dcbradshaw.com. They have a bunch of see their tabletop and educational resources at yeah. Yeah, he does voice acting too. Yeah, he lives in Scotland. I don't know why I just don't like And see, he has a bunch of nice um, uh, uh, supplements. I think mostly for D&D, yeah. And one of these days, I'm going to find out what this is about, these fake movements. Oh. Where this will be centering politics. Make you very Ridiculous happy. role play game, so cool. I'm into that. Yeah. We're not ridiculous here. Nope. Where is Sir Barrington? Ah, Sir Barrington. Sir Barrington. Sir Barrington. Legend transcends itself. That man's a bear. That man's a bear. How oh, so sorry, dare sir. you? Sorry, Sir Barrington. Dare you? Sorry, Sir Barrington. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's get let's show this guy some support and follow him on on Twitter at Curious Penguin. Curious Penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DC Bradshaw. Let's oh. jump into this episode. Buckle up, guys. So. Hold on to my butt. Hold on. I'm gonna get our music going again. Music. We have some nice mandolin music because Orator can be Bard Brother plays mandolin. My special oh. all Bard Brother. Here. All Bard. Here. <laughs> Your balls oh, are sure. Um, Alright, so last time on Dungeon Dandles, Kiara, Ellie, and Keyambi go to the lakeside beach with Lionel, who is Luna's brother, Order, who is Keyambi's brother, and Lucius, who is Kiara's uncle, and Aragon, who wow, is got, Tarina's like, brother, and Tarina is a previous player, <sighs> and along with Lionel's friends, so it was a big party. And uh, they went and just had fun on the beach. Uh, had some shenanigans during the beach episode. We uh, talk here. Swim. Yes, talk here. How to swim? That was wholesome. I liked that. That was great. And, uh, I like that because now she can swim. Yes. yes. <laughs> um. And then uh, Luna and Aragon encounter something strange in the woods. Uh, Luna. Oh yeah, Galak, who is Luna's boyfriend, comes over and you guys test his new uh, arrowheads on the o Odo dummy in the distance, which is... <laughs> Odo was Luna's toxic ex, so we decided to blow up his visage. And, um, so satisfying. Yes, after a rousing day, they, um, everyone decided to go home. Luna and Galak went a romantic moonlight wolf ride and stopped at... This forest glade with daffodils, and they both went over there thinking, we remember this, but we don't know how we remember this. Uh, it's there that Luna reclaims this rapier in, in the stone, and she is then flooded with her memories of Linnea from her past life. And likewise, Galak remembers his past life as Yero. And so to clarify, Linnea is Luna's grandmother times five. So five generations back. She had a first lover named Yero, who was murdered because he was a werewolf. And then um, she had a, a second husband named Hunter, and Luna came from Linnea and Hunter, and then reincarnated as Linnea. Um, Linnea, anyway, Luna and Linnea are <sighs> reincarnations. <laughs> so, just to clarify that. And we um, ended with Lucius Oh yeah, there's also the reveal that Rune, who is Lionel's boyfriend, I have so many NPCs, is undead, and don't know what type of undead. Then Lucius invited Kieran to go with him on basically an... Uh, he, he wanted to follow Rune because he, he didn't trust him, he felt like something strange was going on, so he invited her to show her the ropes of of demon hunting and tracking that sort of thing. So we are going to start with Kira and Lucius. 
Excellent. A nice moonlit walk for family. <laughs> As the party breaks up at the lodge, you and Lucius turn down a pathway and shoot the breeze. Um, so we ask you, uh, so how are you doing? How do you feel, topside? We're well, a little harder now that we're in all these trees. It feels like my nose is always stuffed to some degree when I wake up in the morning, but it clears up sometime around the afternoon. <clears throat> yeah, the plants are definitely different here. Uh, it took me a while to get used to mushrooms being only about this tall, and it like, indicates like, you know, a palm-sized mushroom as opposed to, you know, it points to a tree. That's all. Yeah, they're quite cute topside. They're like less... Yeah, I understand why they're called toadstools, because, you know, toads stay on them sometimes. That sounds adorable. It is actually <laughs> quite adorable. I found it at least one time in the woods, and, oh... Um, because <laughs> he kind of, like, looks up and remembers it. <laughs> that sounds darling. Hmm. It was nice learning how to swim. It only took a long time. <laughs> it just, like, only took several decades. <laughs> hey, what are you going around to it? I got around to it, though I avoided it through no fault of my own. <laughs> <sighs> Just a series of accidents. <laughs> oh. And then, you know, procrastination, got other things to do, and then just slip my mind. Does that uh, scar of yours have anything to do with that? You kind of, like, the eyes, like, the, the scar that was, like, on your thigh, I think? Yes, yeah. it's like around the knee to the thigh area, and she's like, oh, ha, huh, exactly that. Good eye, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like when uh, you're learning uh, magic and stuff, they give you the preliminary, like, safety lessons. Like, you know, don't, don't cast at someone you're not trying to cast at. Make sure you're not within the immediate vicinity of, uh, okay. of a magic neutral or magic volatile zone uh, and if you have any uh, spells that have to do with any of the natural elements try not to be near any reactive elements <laughs> like you know sure, try not to <laughs> cast lightning around lots of water try not to yeah. cast wind I don't know in a maelstrom uh, yeah. so a lot of things and uh, you know uh, the last bit uh, it seems <laughs> seems so simple uh, Try not to cast fire nearby any of the magic lanterns. <laughs> and uh, it's a simple lesson, and it's not really hard to forget, honestly. And actually, no, it's no, it's not hard to forget at all, actually. But um, you know, like when you're in training, you get a little bit hot blooded, and so as my friend and I were kind of having a little bit of a one-upsmanship on the battlefield and it got a little bit more heated than it needed to and uh, we had already gone over the mechanics of holding breath and everything like mm, a little bit before but um, we had a training exercise and then we we're supposed to go back out to um, to do the mechanics of actual swimming and uh, mm -hmm. I thought it'd be cheeky and uh, try off uh, burning hands for the first time Oh. In, a, in, a, in an ether where it could be uh, appreciated by my peers. Uh, but uh, I didn't realize that during the fray I had uh, mishandled some of my movements. Might have accidentally knocked over a lantern and uh, not noticed it before I set it off. And uh, <sighs> now, see, <laughs> they, the healers were spot on they actually got it so that it wouldn't uh be a maiming thing i mean i have to function for <laughs> martial duty and everything like that but um i had to leave it alone for a minute because eh, the oil in the lamps are not just oil I'm glad I wore my boots that day because uh, it would not just go down to my knee if it weren't for some really, really nice boots. So, uh, boots will save you every time. <laughs> Aye, there's nothing like a good pair of boots. Aye, nothing like a good pair of boots. Keeps your feet dry and keeps them from being burned. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I got to watch the lessons just by the time I healed, we'd already moved on to other things, so. 
And so you just uh, managed to avoid water for about a... Uh, how long? <laughs> well, it was a lesson I meant to get around to, but then like, you know, then... You get into more martial training, you learn other spells, you start doing uh, advanced training exercises with like the rest of the class, you start going to divisions and like different uh, different like fighting cells and like or, uh, training cells with other people and then you know start going on patrols and before you know it, uh, it's been a few decades and you never really made it back out to water because you never really found time to have a nice time at the beach. He <laughs> just kind of gives you this like, mm -hmm, look. <laughs> I thought I don't really like getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, fair. it's, it's actually quite nice. Like, yeah. It's hard swimming armor. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard swimming armor. Also, oddly enough, the sun, despite its garish brightness, actually makes for a very nice um it's warm. It's it's warm when you swim. It's quite nice actually. Yeah, it's not cold. You're yeah. more used to water being yeah. 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 <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Right. But... Uh, I think my only hang-up as being topside is that... It just doesn't feel far enough. I'm not sure why, but um... It's like an itch in the back of my head. It's... It's most likely a sleep thing. It's... It's not a big deal, actually. Now that I think about it, it's probably just sleep. Oh, you're not sleeping well in here? Uh, I get enough sleep. I get trance fine. Just it's a disturbing sleep. It's and I and I know it's like you know how we talked earlier, and I couldn't decide if if like it was a real react thing or not that I had I have dreams a lot of dreams they're quite active and I don't like them as much and I've gotten to the point where I just had to write them down to get them out of my head but I I'm thinking it I think it's likely guilt it just still feels weird to be leaving and everything lots of things unsaid and probably just hung up over it and I'm, I'm sure it'll go away with time but it's just can't wait it for enough time to pass for it to be done with, you know. That yeah, looks wrong. Yeah, I um I remember having uh, strange dreams when I was up here too. Initially, for uh he's like, well, um I was a. Uh, I was sent up here for school. Yeah. I, and I, I remember I did have some strange dreams. It's been so long, I don't remember much. Really. But once I uh, started doing school, then they went away. Um, could just be the stress of uh, changing places. Uh, could be old road track doesn't want to quite let go. Could be a mixture of both. I mean, there's a lot to take in. The line's a funny thing. And he says, yeah. oh, uh... You know the box I've been carrying around? Aye. And he's like, um... He, he looks at you like, you know what's in it, right? I think it had something to do with that, uh... A contract you struck up to some degree, but uh, might be a little fuzzy on the contents. <laughs> Just it's a, it's a, he's like, one of the relics that you and your friend gathered. Um, then we did the like mad dash around gun drink collecting demon artifacts and the musical, yeah, the musical episode. So, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so he's like. Well, anyway, I don't know. I, I'm not. I know they're. Uh, I don't know exactly how powerful they are. Uh, it's a uh, subtle magic, but subtle magic can be very powerful. Anyway, point being, I gotta take it somewhere where they'll be secure. 
And I like taking it to the Vermeer family. They're the, they're the most neutral out of the places I feel comfortable in dropping off uh, items such as these. So it's a hard box should go to a cool place. <laughs> I that sort of thing. Mm. But they're far, far east on the other side of the Veil than Principality, so eventually I'll have to make my way over there. That's a long way. Well, it's best I get them deposited somewhere or safe to the north. I don't know what these Lord demons are stirring up to do. Poor devils. Yeah, he's, he's, they've been stirring up a lot of trouble lately. Something's wrong in Gorongar. Oh, they're tight lipped as ever. They don't like telling me much. Anyway, point being, I don't plan on dying anytime soon, but if anything happens to me, I need you to take the box. You better knock on some wood. That's going to be some heavy luggage. <laughs> you then, I mean, you just, just pick a tree and you go and just kind of knock on the wood and have a laugh. <laughs> I gotcha. Well, it's good to know, at the very least. <clears throat> and when they had uh, broken off from the group, uh, they broke off because they were following someone? Yeah, yeah, Lucius was like, I want to follow Rune, so... Ah, okay. And so, uh, so they're walking along, uh, Kiara sort of just, like, glances around, she's like, oh. So... You thinking he's part of the part of the abyssal type? I don't know what he is. He's definitely not normal. Could be wrong. Could be a lot of things. I'm not sure. I just uh, kind of get a sense for these things. He yes. kind of like thinks about it. And he's he's too um, he sits, he sits too still. Well, that sounds weird, but. You know, it's most hmm. living creatures twitch or move or blink too much or, you know, they do, they, everyone seems to have some sort of tick. This guy is... still. So, maybe he's a golem, part rock. Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but right oh, now, God. let's do some reconnaissance and see who points. And, uh, you guys have walked to, like, another lodge. Um, whoops, that's weird. I keep zooming out on accident. Oh yeah, so he points and uh, up ahead you can like see Rune walking, so he looks at you and he says, well, we're gonna go in pretty close now, so roll, roll for stealth. <laughs> Oh, first roll. My stealth is... That's a 14 plus 2. That is 16. Hey. Nice. Did you roll at this advantage because you have armor? <laughs> I don't remember if I put the armor back on, but you know what? I never specified that I did, so. Oh, okay. I thought you were still on. I... Uh, it's a 15 plus 2, that's 17. So that's... we'll stick with <laughs> Okay! That's, 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 that's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty good for this advantage. Good. Yeah, um, this dice. Well, you know, we had to crawl around like the Undertark for a minute. It's like, it's a bunch of rocks and stuff, so gonna adjust for four I mean, falls there. The should... dirt's much softer. Usually the D&D &D gods know when you have disadvantage, and usually you get like a 3 and a 5. <laughs> or a 2. I'm not projecting. Okay, so, um, I'm gonna get the, uh... Look away, D&D &D gods, look okay. away! <laughs> so you're on the ground, you're crawling, Lucius is next to you, and you're kind of like ducking behind trees and trying to be, be stealthy. And, um, you, <laughs> you said 15? Uh, it was, I rolled a 14 plus 2, so that is a 16. Oh, okay. And then the second roll was a 15 plus 2. <laughs> okay. So it's a 16. 16. 
So um, what happens is you're crawling along, you see Rune go and he uh, goes and sits and leans on like each of the like lodges has like this balcony kind of area where people lounge or talk or chat or whatever. And uh, so he goes up the steps and just kind of lounges on the balcony. And um, there's this moment where like um, your armor like kind of like shh. And then uh, like he looks around behind him and then Lucius just kind of like puts you like just kind of like stills you. And uh, you see Rune kind of scan the area. And then he turns around and goes back up the steps. Okay. Kira just does this like slow look to Blue, just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> just kind of nods. Um, so he is. He, you, uh, let's have you do a, uh, you, you get up close and then you realize, like, you gotta find a place to hide, so do a survival check to find a place to hide! Come on. Yay! Survival is... Come on. <laughs> no bonuses. Ah, I got a 14! <laughs> Just a 14. There's no pluses. This berry bush seems fantastic. It's blue. I'm blue. Uh, Lucius didn't roll that great out. He got like a 10. So the two of you were just kind of like <laughs> flexing around like in the, in the like bushes. And um. Natural. Pick mushrooms. And um. Like. <laughs> Rune looks over at you guys and just kind of gives you this look with like an eyebrow or and it's just like um. And then Lucius says, mm, uh, let's go in for a drink. <laughs> Time. <laughs> so, all right, time, but I'm keeping the mushrooms. <laughs> Let's bring it back to earlier conversation. Uh, yeah. Let's look at his. Oh, it's just after you get it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you and Lucius go and step up the stairs and uh, pass by Rune, who just kind of gives you a nod. It's like, evening, and then you two uh, step inside, and it's a, a bustling tavern. Things are... It's a, it's a more quiet tavern, like this is where the, kind of like the older folks go. You see people, humanoid, uh, humans who are like in their four A's, and then you go and, um, I assume you, where, where do you want to sit? Do you want to try to find, like, a window to look at him or some vantage point or something? She suggests that they get, uh, they get drinks to look like they are going in with the intention of getting something, or then that they just happened to, you know, peruse the bar. But the minute that they're at the bar, she just is like, <laughs> <laughs> you're clanging, you're clanging and banging stealthy knees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two of you kind of like shuffle. We just actually will go and like get you um, a drink, and you guys bring it over. And he says, "Let's uh, sit over there." Let's see, finds a. Let's see, oh yeah, he finds a really good vantage point. Okay. We will hop over to Kansi right now. So, uh, me? Yes. You? Me? Yeah. Party people. Party people in the house. So, it's, um, you're pretty wound up from the evening, and, um, everyone's kind of, like, going here or there and departing, and... You just would like to have some space to walk by yourself. You know, so you're just going to walk through Furcus. It's nice and calm, and during your walk, you pass through the cool forest, and 
step through the moonlight mottled with leaves and you hear the the chirping of a large colony of bats fly above you and they flutter and swirl and then you just like disappear into the forest uh, around you hear uh, owls hooting and uh, just like general animal noises but it's, it's kind of nice it's um almost like a, a dull white noise and it's a and you look up and you, you see the stars in the sky and kind of reminisce a little bit. And it's around this time that you come to uh, the fork in the road, which is where Order and Erevan uh, and Lucius had departed. So like, they are lodging, you know they're lodging in this nearby lodge. And there's a there's the front of the lodge that comes off from the road, and then behind it, there's basically a lawn. And as you're walking, just kind of enjoying the evening, you hear your brother Orator shout, Aaron, you gotta be my horse! <laughs> and uh, you look around, so make a perception check. Oh dear. Well, can you repeat for me what you said and what he said? Aravan, um, so Order shouts, Aravan, you have to be my horse. You have to be my horse. Hmm. Yes. Hmm, I see. Yes. Well, perception wasn't that great today for some reason. I don't know. Um, so I have an 11. Okay, I mean, it, it takes you a little bit. Thankfully, I have really good perception, but I rolled really bad. It wasn't hard, he's being loud. Um, Thank goodness. You can, you, I mean, it's so easy sad. to assume he's had some drink and you go around and it takes you a little bit to just get around to the other side and you see Aravan being chased by Ordor, who is literally holding a saddle and he's just like, Aravan, you gotta be my horse. And Aravan's just like, uh, and Aravan's just kidding, you know, he runs behind this water trough and he's like, yeah, because that would be, you know, being the drunk guy's horse is going to get me really far in life. And, and Order kind of like waves his saddle, it's going be you, man! And next, Aravan gives him this, it's, it's very, it's very reminiscent of Trina, this expression, and Aravan says, what about an actual horse? And uh, Order says, no, they have no toes, so they can't balance! In order, and then Aravan's just like, technically the hooves are just one giant toe. And, and then Order says, see what I mean? It's, it's got one toe! How can they balance? How do they, how are they gonna run? I mean, it's gotta be you, man. It's gotta be you. And we have to interrupt this. Yeah. <laughs> his great discussion. Yeah. She... Can I, can I do something? Yeah, hop in there, yeah, yeah. Okay, great, okay. So, okay, how far away am I right now? You're like, you're like, not that far, it's like 20 feet. It's like, like you're a monk, you're always a backflip okay, okay. away. Yeah. Oh, the backflip is the edge, right. Oh. Yeah, she's gonna have to do that. But she's, she's gonna, gonna do a very, like, concerned like, jog over to her, her brother at Aramand. She's like, like Order! Where on earth did you get that saddle? She says in a polite like mom sort of, why are you doing sort of voice there? And she's gonna like go and like up to order, kind of like hold his shoulders and be like, hey, what's going on? What the heck is this? And he's just like, oh my gosh, sess your hair! And he's like, this is great! I first I find this saddle just stuck on the ground. And then, I mean, it was on a rack. But there's no one who's using it. <laughs> but this is great because now, now the three of us can play drinking games. It's no problem with just one. And he, he like attempts to like he loops his arm around Aravan, um, but like Aravan's facing the other direction, so Aravan is being forced to like walk backwards. And he tries to take you with him. So what do you do? <laughs> Okay, hold on. Describe how we're situated again. Okay, so you're basically in the backyard of the lodge, on like a field. Okay, of, so of like, grass. like arm thing. I have an arm around. I'm holding on to order. Yeah, yeah. So you're on the side. Yeah, so you're on one side of order, and then Aravan um, has been grabbed by order. Um, okay. 
And, um, but he, like, he just, like, grabbed the arm that was nearest to him. So, like, he, he grabbed, like, the opposite arm. And so now Aragorn is facing the other direction of you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, like... And hand me you hooligan. <laughs> okay. To be honest, I'm just gonna cut. As I was hard to hear you, Tiffany, but I'm gonna pretend that order was slurring so much that Keanu didn't pick up any sense of the words that he was spewing out of his mouth. Um, and so, Keanu is just gonna like I don't. Can I do like a weird sort of like half kind of grapple thing? Can I like flip out of his arm or like you know? Yeah, just make a way or something. Make a acrobatics check. Sounds like sure. an acrobatics check. Let's be fancy. I like being fancy. Yes. <laughs> Good. Next one, yeehaw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. E very easily, you can do whatever you want uh, with a natural okay. 20. Alright, then. Well, in that case, I'm probably just gonna, like, like pull him like, a little bit, like, maybe, like, put my ankle around him, just kind of, like, spin him around so that way he's, like, you know, fast enough that he has to let go. Of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I can like look him in the eye and be like, sweetheart, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you think that maybe we should go sit down and get some water? Water is delicious. Have you, you were, ever had any water? Well, was like, to a beach, you should know a water. Sleep. <laughs> and and Aragorn's like, yeah, uh, water, water sounds very good. Water's great. Um, so we'll have you make you your, good? make your perception. Let's talk about whatever's going on. Make your persuasion right, check. Second? Persuasion. How did I do that? Another nat 20? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah he, he's muttering, your, he's putty in your hands. I love that he's come up when they're not like life or death situations. He's like, you gotta stop being drunk, my brother, and that's it. He's just like, responsible sister roles are always the height. Yeah, and he goes, okay, I mean, all right. So, um, he, he takes you, you take him back, um, Erebin says, well, I mean, there's water in the lodge. That's probably the best place to get it. And I didn't even go to the lodge. Yeah, so you, you go up the stairs to the lodge, and um, as soon as you come up the steps, there's this big, burly uh, dude. And he, he, he walks over to your uh, border, and he has just... Um, Curly brown hair, thick arms. He's probably like um like a farmer or something. And he looks at Order and he says, "You took my saddle." And then he he looks at Order and you're checking out my girlfriend. What's wrong with you? And, <laughs> and Order's just like, "No, man, I was checking you out." And then the farmer is just like, "Oh, um, this is very sudden." I, uh, <laughs> and you just, <laughs> and then there's this moment where the farmer says, I wasn't even anywhere near her. <laughs> <laughs> and order says, it's okay, we're together. And you just hear Aaron groan. And that's it. This so is there like a, a fight brewing here, or what's going on? Uh, make an insight check. You can argue right now. Yeah, make uh, an insight check to see. It's not really very high. This so. guy's gonna fight. All right, let me see if I got there. Supposedly, she's very insightful. So I got a oh, map. Yeah, I got twenty-three. Yeah, this this farmer is curious. He's ready to. He's, he's ready. Throw hands. He's ready to throw hands. You see him okay. grab order. I got, I got my hands. hands. So you can toss them. Uh, hold on. So, okay. So, she's so, picking up my brother. Okay, so okay. Kanti so, uh, sees that this is happening here. And she's like, um, sorry, it's, like I said, it's hard to hear you. So, order hit on the farmer's girlfriend. And then stole the saddle, hit on the girlfriend, and then said, Oh no, I was hitting on you. I was like, Wait, I wasn't anywhere near her. And then it's just. Yeah, okay. he basically insulted this bar like three times. Yep, yep. Great, thank you. Bar disaster, I like that. Yeah, he's just gonna go ahead and just kind of like, you know, step in between, like, Hey, excuse me, sir, what's your name? I'm so sorry about my brother. He. He hasn't seen people in so long, he forgot how to act politely in public. <laughs> so I'm so angry. <laughs> okay, um, make a persuasion check. Um, I'm gonna say, 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 I
Uh, um, I wouldn't say a disadvantage because Warder has made this man very upset. He's probably also making faces at him behind your back. Yeah, Order is busy just like. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, Belligerent. Yeah. I got a 15. Okay, and. Um, okay, 15. So, like, you, you see, um, like, uh. <laughs> You see the farmer kind of like, uh, oh yeah, you see him like, okay, well, I mean, he said very rude things to me, and that's how uh, he's like talking with you and um, saying like, that's how I worked on it for, for so long, and, and he goes on this long-winded explanation of how he makes saddles, and that's like his prize saddle, and, and things like that. Um, and next up, you you see. Let's see how. Uh, let's see how order is doing. Okay. The, the whole time, KMP is like. KMP is nodding. Be like, yes. Oh, yeah. Very yes. important words you are saying to me right now. Yes. Trying her best just to be polite enough to diffuse everything. Uh, Such a good big sister. I, I, yeah. So now I'm having um, order make um, basically charisma saves to be polite, and he failed. So <laughs> you see, order just will be like, "Well, your saddle's dumb anyway," and he goes and just like throws breakfast it on. Um, Throws it at like this big orc in the corner who's just chomping on this mutton or whatever, and the orc's just like, How dare my food is ruined! <laughs> <laughs> and he just like picks up a chair and like throws it back, and, and then someone shouts, Can I deflect the chair? Yeah, you can deflect the chair. Yeah, uh, deflect the chair so we can uh, uh, do the catch missile thing, I guess. I honestly don't know how to do it. I don't get many chances to use it, so I need to look at it. Um, you can take the man out of prison. You can't take prison out of the man. He wants to start a riot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I think you roll a d10. Okay. And, like, pretty much, like, if you reduce the damage to zero, then you could throw it back at them. All right, so I have to do a... Let me what, what, can I just, like, catch it? Like, redirect it? Uh, yeah, we'll just have you do a dex check. Make it easy. Yeah, okay. that sounds good. Alright, generic dex check. Alright, 16. Uh, yeah, so, um, like, you catch it, and you just, like, This is Tiffany, your GM for Dungeon Damsels. We update on Wednesdays and Saturdays now at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have merchandise on our Redbubble and on links via the link tree. We also have coffee and a Patreon if you wish to donate to us. Please like, subscribe, and comment as we would love to hear from you. Uh, you can also find us on basically every podcast platform out there if you can't sit down and listen to a YouTube video. And if you're wondering why we don't stream, it's because my internet can't support it. But uh, regardless, thank you for listening and watching. And remember to be kind, inclusive, and loving.